certainly a, a tough uh, operating environment for MTN caused by own goals here in South Africa, including grey listing and, of course, load shedding, uh, which have not uh, dampened the resilience of the MTN group. The company still has 22 billion rand in cash and uh, says that they want to use that to pay their $450 million euro bonds early, while their liquidity, liquidity position has them at $60 billion. Rands. The group CEO, Ralph Mupita, joins us now. Ralph, thank you very much uh, for your time. All this hard work, all this uh, uh, passion that you, your team has to make MTN and keep it at the top has been overshadowed by load shedding, eating into the earnings of uh, not only MTN but major companies that are on the JSE. Uh, you've had some really, really tough words to say uh, on uh, South Africa, almost saying that uh, it could become a failed state if we are not, as a country, uh, making sure that load shedding is behind us. Yeah, very good evening, Polani, and uh, to uh, your viewers. Um, you know, maybe a couple of points uh, in my commentary. I think the first is, as you said, with a very pleasing set of results for 2022. Notwithstanding the, uh, the macro uh, backdrop, which was very challenging, elevated inflation, uh, currencies under pressure against the U.S. dollars, uh, we have to uh, put a lot of capex into the ground, approximately $2 billion every year we put into investing in our network. So we had some really, uh, you know, uh, big headwinds that we had to navigate to deliver these results. And they were very pleasing Top line growing in line with medium uh, uh, term guidance, 15% constant currency. Uh, underlying operating earnings up 18%, return on equity at 23, and the dividend uh, you know growing at 10%. So the overall result was uh, you know uh, very resilient from our point of view. Um, the big challenge we faced uh, um, in last year, and actually it gives a bit of a segue into the year ahead, is that the elevated levels of uh, load shedding. Uh, you know, were uh, unprecedented and unexpected. If you look at the first half of the year, you had uh, 62 days of load shedding, and, uh, you know, the, the frequency was actually pretty low, uh, and they were hardly ever at stage four. And then from September on, uh, that's when you saw the profile of load shedding really kick in at very elevated levels, which we are now anticipating uh, is going to be with us at least in the near term, if not the medium term, at stage four plus. Um, and uh, that's why we made the call out uh, around, firstly, that there's a dish, uh, we've lost uh, earnings because of uh, the extent of load shedding. We now have to make additional investments uh, to secure the network, uh, ensure our customers have high levels of connectivity. Um, and, um, you know, the position that we find ourselves as a country, I think, is one way we need to reflect, both as business and government, uh, to work together to deal with uh, the crisis that we, we, we are experiencing uh, on the energy side, uh, in logistics, as well as in crime and corruption around the country. Ralph, uh, this has also uh, forced MTN Group to revise the profit margins uh, for the near term. So you are seeing more headwinds in 2023. Yeah, we're certainly seeing headwinds. And as I said, um, we kind of rebased our view on what is the expected levels of load shedding and planning our network around that uh, base assumption. So our base assumption is, at least in the near term, if not the medium term, we are going to be at sustained levels of load shedding, stage four plus. Um, you know, two years ago, if somebody had asked you where do you think load uh, levels of load shedding would be, you would have probably said stage four is force majeure. That is kind of an act of God has happened, but we now live quite normally with it. Um, but the networks that were designed in South Africa our network and I guess uh, the competitor networks, they were designed around a, a, a underlying assumption that you have 100% uh, power grid availability, and then you design the network accordingly. We have very small real estate around each of our sites. We have 12,900 sites across the country um, because um, your, your power is coming from the grid. If I go and look at Nigeria, my Nigeria network, 17,000 uh, um, sites, the assumption is power availability on the grid is only 5%. So 95% actually has to be arranged site by site. Um, so, you know, you know, our, our network is not going to look exactly like the one in Nigeria, not, not in the near term, but we have to augment our, uh, the network uh, design itself 
and the level of redundancy in the network, where do we have not only battery power, but actually gensets, uh, generator power. And that's why we flag that there's additional expenditure. Um, you know, in our revision of our guidance down, it's about 1.2 percentage points of uh, EBITDA margin impact just from that activity uh, into the in, into the near term. So um, our, our revision around the, uh, the guidance is mainly to do with that. There is also an additional management uh, fee we are asking uh, the second operation to pay group, but that's kind of for a 100% owned subsidiary that, uh, you know, is, uh, is one that you can actually say is in the wash. So the real additional cost is this 1.2 percentage points, uh, you know, really driven by our view that we need to augment the network with more resilience, uh, batteries that, uh, you know, can deal with stage six and, uh, uh, and can have eight hour, uh, you know, you know, you know, uptime as well as, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, you know, recharge times. Uh, so it, it's requiring us to to change the network uh, configuration a little bit more. Ralph, it's, it's not just a blackouts, isn't it, that are actually stifling growth and the ease of doing business, uh, but the decaying infrastructure as well at municipal level is a risk to investor confidence in South Africa. But I wanted to know from you as well how the rollout of 5G, which is an important part of what you're doing right now, is being impacted by the blackouts. Look, 5G is an exciting technology with uh, numerous use cases we think are going to be good for societies more broadly, consumers and enterprise. So we're very, uh, you know, we, we're very excited about 5G. I think um, within the context of South Africa right now, I, I think the number one focus is to ensure that we have a resilient network. Uh, you, look, I mean, the, the state of disaster regulations, you know, have been gazetted, and uh, we see this as a unique opportunity, you know, for business and government to come together to say, what do we need to do? to secure the resilience of critical infrastructure. Um, as I mentioned, our sites, you know, we have 12,900 odd sites. They're distributed across the country. Um, and, um, you know, what we can do is, you know, under the, you know, the, this, uh, you know, state of disaster regulations, see what work we can do, either as MTN, actually as an industry more broadly, uh, you know, to ensure that uh, we can keep the network at a very high level of availability. One item I would give as an example is we don't have the electrical engineering uh, technician capacity to deal with what's required across our networks. That's for sure. We've seen that. So we think that there is, for a limited period of time, we do need to augment uh, skills and capabilities that we see in other markets. We've got, you know, uh, you know, very skilled uh, electrical engineering technicians uh, who, for a period of time, could come and help. Uh, but what they need is visas. And, uh, you know, accessing visas is, is very difficult at this time. So that's just an example of how we can uh, augment some of the actions. A great performance indeed for the year 2022 under some trying and difficult conditions. Ralph Mupita, Group CEO at MTN, thank you very much for your time this evening. Of course, uh, the MTN Group uh, posting some really, really good numbers there. Now they have 289.1 million subscribers in the 19 countries in which they operate.